everyone, this is Tiago from Codeversity and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you how to work with data with .NET 8 and SQL Server. In this tutorial you'll learn how to set up an SQL Server in Docker, make an SQL Server database connection with .NET 8 and Entity Framework 8, develop a CRUD to interact with the data and the CRUD is a set of actions that you can interact with data that is to create, read, update and delete and work with Blazor. Before we dive in, let's understand what Blazor is. Blazor is a framework that's a lot, that allows you to build interactive web user interfaces using C Sharp instead of JavaScript. It runs in the browser via WebAssembly or in the server, offering a powerful way to build modern web applications with .NET. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. Before we start, let me explain what Docker is. Docker is a tool that makes it easy to create, deploy and run applications in isolated environments called containers. Containers bundle an application and all its dependencies like libraries and tools etc. So it runs consistently across different environments, whether it's your local computer, a server or the cloud. So for example, I'm in a Mac and I want to use SQL Server, but SQL Server is a Microsoft product. So uh, since Mac is from Apple, it will not have an app called SQL Server with the same functionalities. So I have to go to, to the cloud and grab an image that reproduces the same app as SQL Server to run on an isolated environment uh, across the, the Mac environment that is virtualized and can run it independent of the operating system. Since I'm using a Mac and SQL Server is a Microsoft product, we will use Docker to run SQL Server in a container. So let's type the command. But don't worry, it will be on the description. So we'll start by pulling the image. Microsoft.mcr Microsoft.image MSSQL server. I'll pull the 2022 image, the latest. I'm using the Docker terminal, but you can use your own PC terminal as long as you install the Docker command. Now we should have the image installed. As you can see, the status is unused, but if we are going to run on the Mac, this will not work. This will give us an error because we have to accept the EULA by specifying this command. If we go back, you, you can see that this is not running. So let's type in the command. So we will go to docker run e accept EULA equals yes, which means we accept. And then we will type the user, our user will be SA, and then the password will be, we have to put in a strong password, let's go with this one. And then we sign the port, this is the default port, but let's use the default port. And then we put the name. Let's call it SQL Server and then the image name again, exactly like we put before. SQL Server 2022 latest image. And as you can see, we exited this one and we have it running successfully. This is now ready to accept connections and you now have your SQL server running successfully on your Mac. If you're using Windows, installing SQL server is pretty straightforward. Here's how you can do it. You come to this website that will be also in the description and you download the SQL server for the developer edition that is in here and then you will have a free fully featured use. You run the SQL inst server installer and you can either choose the basic or custom installation. 
then you will you will configure the SQL server just like we did before by setting a strong password for the SA accounts and then you can proceed as we will from now on. Let's start by creating a Blazor app. I'm using VS Code but feel free to use an IDE of your choice. So let's start by .NET new project and Blazor Blazor server app, I'm putting in desktop and I'm choosing fruits app for its name. So let's learn a bit about its structure. As you can see, it has a very particular structure. It has the www root folder that contains static files like CSS that are used for for styling the JavaScript and images. Then we have the pages folder that contains Razor components. It's the Blazor's equivalent of web pages. Then we have the shared contains shared components used across multiple pages. So let's say we have a component like a menu that we want to use across multiple pages, but we don't want to duplicate code. We can just reuse the components. Then we have the program. A program is like where we configure and start the Blazor application. So here, for example, we have the Razor pages, the server side Blazor, when we register our services and build the builders, etc. Then we have the main layout. The main layout is where the, we provide the common layout for the application's pages. So let's begin. Let's start by creating the data. So let's eliminate here the weather forecast and let's create, since we are going to talk about fruits, let's create an object called fruit.cs. What will our fruit have? Since we are going to populate the database, it will have, of course, public start fruit. And then we will have to have an ID, a unique ID that will be our primary key. Then we have the name that is characterized by a string. And let's put it simple and just bring in a color. These three should be enough for what we want. Up next, let's use the, the entity framework for now, and then I will teach how to use the system.sql server library instead of the entity framework so that we have two ways of work with data with .NET. It. So first with entity framework core. Let's begin with the app db context. App db context. The app db context is a class where we will make, make the connection between our class and the entity in the database. So we will be able to update, create, delete, and read from the database and C sharp. This is like a bridge, let's say like that. So let's declare it, public class app db context that inherits from the db context from, from the entity framework core. As you can see, we are getting an error. This is because we haven't installed the entity framework core package. So let's do that. Let's open here a terminal. And again, this will be in the description. So all the packages and all the difficult links or URLs or anything in the, of the same kind will be in the description. So let's type in .NET app package Microsoft.entity framework core. You don't need to, to know this by heart, so you can just 
if you have a different ID like Rider or Visual Studio, you can just search in the Nugget packages for Entity Framework Core, for example. So let's install this Entity Framework Core. Okay, so we are in the wrong folder. Let's enter the fruits app and add the package. You can see we still have an error. So we are missing the using for the Microsoft Entity Framework Core. So now it's all good. Let's keep on going. So every app DB context has a set of entities. In our case, our set will be the fruits. That will be the group of entities which our SQL table will have. So we declare always like this. Let's call it fruits. Get and set. Public. Let's define the constructor. This is like um, always like this. This is a, a pattern that we have to use in order for this to work. is ready so we have the entities we have the app db context and now let's add some features let's go to the to the navigator menu where is it the navigator menu should be in the shared folder because this is a Actually, before that, let us try to, to run, to check if this is working. This is not working. Why? Because we have here an error where the namespace data is not working because we deleted this service. And the fruit app. So we don't need this as well because we deleted this. Let's try to run again. What is the error this time? Of course, we deleted this. Let's comment this for now. data of course we don't need this because we are still working with forecasts with forecasts which we eliminated so let's eliminate all of this let's see if let's see if we get any any other errors no that's good so Let's try to win here. Let me bring here the window. And here we have. So we have here account that is the default app. We have the fetch data, which we don't have since we eliminated. Let's just ignore this page and work on the counter. We have here our page, the fruits app that we edited. And let's edit the counter to add, edit and delete the fruits. So let's go back edit the counter dot razor remember that razor is the html file that can include c sharp code and replace the counter with the fruits uh, uh, crudes that we wanted so the page will be called fruits and we will be injecting what do we need to like we said to handle the data before on the entity framework core 
of course we need to inject here the app db contest called let's call it contest so here this inject is to enable us it's like similarly to the dependency injection in c sharp and um, i have a video that talks a bit about it go check it out and um, this gives us access to the context to this context which we will implement methods to do the code and we will have access in here in the code to to be able to edit add delete and uh, read the fruits so let's keep on going so the page title will be fruits code and then we will have here fruit on the header one we will eliminate this and then let's just do it from scratch let's set an, an ordered list and these are these are html tasks i mean tags and let's set the for each we use a net when we want to to use some keywords from c sharp and let's use a var fruit in fruits we will declare the fruits later which we will access from the db context and then we will have a list where we will have we will list all the fruits that we have from the, the database so we'll have the fruit id and then we will do the same thing for the other three the id the name and the color now to get the fruits we need to implement here in the code so here in the code we will have to access the, the context right so we will have to have methods let's do it async in order to not have concurrent tasks and we can talk about asynchronous tasks and uh, threads in another video let me know in the comments if you would like a tutorial about it uh, so let's write it task to add a fruit and then we will access the context which is the name of the variable of the app db context that we injected and then what was the name of the list that will give us access to the entities in the table it was fruits the db set so fruits dot and to add to the table we just call add and we call the new fruit a new fruit but we have to create a new fruit right so let's create here an input So let's put an HTML input and bind to a variable called new fruit dot name, which we have will have a placeholder with the name enter fruit name so that the user can fill out and close the tag. Missing something where I'm missing. Ah, of course, I have to declare the new fruit so that we can use in our code. and let's use the same thing here for the color enter fruit color so what we did we do here so we created two inputs so two boxes that will have this text enter fruit name enter fruit color with this placeholder and the user can enter the name the color and then we added the code to add the fruit 
and we will make a communication via DB context, which is from Entity Framework Core, which will go to the database and insert the entity. So now, what we have to do, we have to commit the changes which we can achieve by doing save changes asynchronously and then we will clear the fields by just reinitialize the fruit the new fruit to the new placeholders which will be empty so here we are clearing the input fields after adding and then the fruits in order for the list in here to be up to date we will await for the context fruits to list a sec We declare the fruits, so we can put it here. This will be all the fruits that we have in our database. And then to list a sync. DB set doesn't contain what is going on here. Let me check. I think everything is good and this is just we just need to maybe initialize using the already existence on initialize the thing I think so what does this method do? This method already exists and we are overriding it because once we use this razor file, this always, always calls this uninitialized async. And then we can do anything we want when this page is called. So let's initialize the, the fruits. So fruits equals to await context. Let's get the fruits from the database. The fruits. Let's see what we need to fill. Sometimes this. Yeah, this is just a bug. Let's just reload the window and should be okay. Yeah, indeed. This is okay. Okay. So now, what are we missing here? Of course, we are missing data. Let's just run and ignore this error. .NET run. Go to the counter page. Oh, of course, we have to edit the path and we go to the navigation menu because this is the navigation menu and we have to edit the path. When we click to the counter, we have to direct it to the fruits. So let's go to the to here and href to let's see what we put. We put fruits. So let's put fruits and reload. Actually, let's run again.
this to list async means that we are missing a using the using the same using that we needed before the Microsoft entity framework core. This one should be okay. Exactly. Let's run again. Okay. Let's reload the page. And an expected error actually. So we cannot provide a value for the property context. So which meaning there is no registered service of the type DB context. Where do we register our services? Like I said before, we have a program file in this structure in program where we can register it. So let's do it. Let's register the app DB context of entity framework. How do we do that? It's simple. We just type in builder and then we access the services. Then we just add db context and we put in the type that is app db context. As you can see here, this is the type. And then we set the options. This is a lambda function which will do a predicate. A predicate is an action. So this will do use SQL. When we add the IDB, the IDB context, it will do an action, which is use SQL server. And then we will type our connection string. Our connection string we will, will be the one that will be needed to access the database. We know that we have the Docker ready, but we have to connect to a specific port that is here. Let's create a database. This is Azure Studio, but feel free to use anything you want. So let's put localhost. And since the, the default port is 1433, we don't need to add the ports. And then the username, if you remember, is SA. And then your strong exclamation mark password. The database is a default. Let's enable it. Let's put the master. Trust server certificates. Let's put true so that we don't have any issues with uh, security and let's try to connect success as we can see we don't have any tables so let's create one so we created the entity fruit right so we need to add the table the exact same way so let's put in in here Let's call fruits. The column name, if you remember correctly, will be an ID. And it was an int that we declared. It will be a primary key, since will be unique and an identifier. And we will want the system to increment automatically. So the first item will have ID 1, the second will have ID 2, and, it, and so forth, so on, so on. So let's is identity and it will increment like this. Let's add the column. What is it now? You guessed it. It's the name. And then for the strings, it's a similar one that it's n varchar. Let's put 50 characters is more than enough. We don't allow nulls since we want always fields. And the same thing for the color. Color n varchar. We don't want to know and let's commit update database publishing changes and now we have our fruits let's select it to see if we have any data and we don't for now let's go back to the code so now we can proceed with the connection string let's do it so 
If you remember correctly, our server is located in localhost, in our local machine. No cloud, our, our simply laptop, in my case. Our database is called master, as you can see here. And then our user ID, as we called before, is SA. And then our password is password is your strong exclamation mark password. And then for security reasons and not to have any errors, let's put encrypt true and trust server certificate equals true. There's no need to to know this these two in detail. If you want to know, of course, you can always investigate this, but for now, you don't need to know a lot about this. Okay. So options, there's an S more here. App DB context, add DB context, options. Use SQL Server, and we might be missing again the using Microsoft Entity Framework Core, or in this case, uh, Entity Framework Core SQL Server, which is a package that we also want to install specifically to make the connection between Entity Framework Core and SQL Server. So let's add it. .NET add package and uh, sorry Microsoft .entity framework core .sql server. Okay, and now should be okay. Let's reload the window to see if this corrects anything. I think it did. Let, let it interpret it. Dot SQL server. Put here the using Microsoft Entity Framework Core, and it was this one actually. Okay. So next thing, what do we need? Now we have the app DB context in order to make the connection between our entity and the SQL server on our database. We have now the connection, we have the entity, we have the service registered so that the app knows what to inject and the connection string to know how to connect. We have our page, our HTML page, our user interface and a method to add the fruit as well as the, um, the placeholders and uh, the structure that we will see in a second. We'll have the navigation menu for the, um, the fruits page. We also need to change here the, the, name, the name of the file to be more accurate. And now we need to check if this runs correctly. .NET run. And let's see if this reproduces what we designed here. So we should have a list with a fruit.id.name and color from the fruits that he will get from the context which will connect to our database. That for now it doesn't have anything, but we can add from the, the list. So let's enter the fruit name, let's say an apple. And I like the red ones, so let's put red. So we don't have here the button, 
so we have the functionality but we need to add the button of course <laughs> so let's add the button let's put it in here button with the action on click and we will add which is the method add fruit so we need to call it add fruit and let's call it add add fruit so let's try it let's try now Okay, so let's try the apple again. I like the red ones. And there we go. So, like we have in here, we have listing the ID. I don't know what's going on in here. Let's reload the window. Like I was saying, like we have in here, with the tag listing, we have the food ID, the name, the color from the fruits, then upon initializing which is called on every razor file i mean page that we will get from the context which connects to our database that if we select we now have a one apple we will fetch the fruits to this list and then it will go through them and list one by one let's try to to add another Banana, yellow, success. Now let's maybe add a, a button to edit since this is a CRUD. Let's stop this for a second. And now let's use, let's go for, to the app. Let's create here a method in, in the code section. Let's go private async task edit foot. And then what will we do? To edit the foot, the foot has to exist, right? So let's try to get the foot. And we have to get it from the context await context dot foods let's get the first or default so this mean this means if we either we get the first that occurs when the fruit that id equals to the id that we will receive in here we will receive a fruit. If it doesn't exist, we receive a default and the default for the reference objects is null. So if we receive a null on the fruit, it means it doesn't exist. So if it exists, it means it's different from null. So if fruit different from null, it means that exists. So the new fruit will have a new name. And where will we get the name? From the placeholders, right? Where we get the, the fruit name. So the fruit.name will equals to this variable, new fruit.name. So new fruit.name. And fruit.color equals to new fruit.color. And then let's save the changes. Let's commit to the database. And as we always do, refresh the list in order to see our changes reflected. Context.foods.to list a thing. We have this in here. And that's it. Okay, I think we're all set. 
and uh, now we are just missing a button. Edit fruit. Edit fruit. edit fruit and we also we also need the ID so we need the fruit dot ID this is not what it Want. so we need the fruit ID so the fruit is declared here which means we need to put this code where the fruit is declared that is inside the for each let's get out the add fruit and just put in here what does he want now oh of course what we want is this to do this because otherwise he thinks this is a callback so what did we do so and we want to have this right here otherwise this would be repeated every time we list a fruit so for each fruit we will have a button to add it and the the enter fruit name and enter fruit color placeholders will be just once so let me show you how it worked .net run so now for every fruit we have a button edit and to add the fruit or the placeholders we just have it once because there's no need to to have multiple placeholders since we can just edit one fruit at a time so let's edit the banana maybe let's call it i don't know uh, banana 2 and let's put it green there you go now what are we missing for the crude we are reading we are adding we are editing what are we missing deleting of course so let's do it let's delete it so to delete it it's a similar operation to edit so let's add a button here delete fruit it gives an error because we didn't add a method yet so let's add it so let's add here a private a sync task delete fruit fruit and then we access the context dot fruit and the same way we add in here we can remove and it receives a fruit it will encounter and by ID it will delete since the ID is a unique identifier it will delete none other than the one he encounters here so this is removed we commit the changes again and then we refresh the 
the fruits in order for the fruit that we that we removed to disappear. Shall we try it? Let's do it. Int to fruit. Of course, because in here we are getting the ID, but we want the, the whole fruit because this is the, param the parameter we are receiving, not just the ID. Now it should run without problems. There we go. Since we have two bananas, let's delete this one. Done. Now let's try to add. Done. Edit. Oh, we don't have names, of course, so to test, edit, let's refresh here, banana to test, done. So we have the read, we have the delete, we have the edit, and we have the add. So the code is done. This was using the entity framework. Now we should try using only, only SQL Server from Microsoft's library, the native one. Now that we have seen how we do it using Entity Framework Core, let's see how we use it, how we do it using SQL Server on Microsoft's library. So Entity Framework Core is an ORM, an Object Relational Mapping Framework. Uh, an ORM is a programming technique used to interact with relational databases. Rela relational databases like SQL Server are databases that establish relationship between entities. Okay, so um, by mapping database tables to classes in object-oriented programming languages like .NET, C Sharp. The primary purpose of an ORM is to allow developers to work with databases using their preferred programming languages without needing to write SQL queries directly. But now, let's do it the other way. Let's write a bit of SQL directly. So let's change the code a bit and let's replace with raw SQL and remove the entity framework. The, the entity framework code. So let's start with um, initialization when we get all the entities from the context of entity framework. Let me know in the comments if you would like an SQL tutorial. So let's start. So here we want to be using the SQL connection and to use the SQL connection so we need to install the .NET package system.data.sql client to have a client that we need to connect to the database via native SQL. Let's use it now. System data.sql client so now we can make an SQL connection this using means that once we stop using the SQL connection we can dispose of it so it doesn't stay connected forever it doesn't stay open so let's call it con and then let's create an SQL command and make a selection for every fruit from fruits and we need to pass the connection onto the command. Let's eliminate here. So this is not what I wanted to do. I need new connection and then we want the connection string SQL connection and we want the connection string which 
we can either put on the app settings and use the i options pattern or we can just copy paste for this simple project now we open the connection and Exactly. Now we want the SQL command to get all the fruits and new SQL command where we select all the fruits from the table fruits and we use that connection of course. Then we have the command established for that connection. Now we need to read it so we have to get a data reader, let's call it reader, and get the command to execute our reader. Let's do it a sync. Since we are overriding an asynchronous task. Not a sync, I mean a wait. And now we have to initialize all of our fruits that is the list that we added here dot even better fruits equals new list fruits and then we will initialize with the reader. Since we initialized here, I don't think we need to initialize it again. So let's just put the while. While reader dot read. So while we can read the results, the name of the fruit is equal. So this will read row by row. So let's get from the row, let's get the name and let's get a string. this and not parentheses since this is a dictionary let's put it to string since we want to show text and create a new fruit the name equals name and the color equals color let's format this and then we'll add the fruit to our list of fruits fruits and not all fruits but now since we are adding the fruits to our list maybe it's better to reinitialize to empty since we are getting the results all over again we don't want duplicates so let's do it fruits equals new list of fruits let's do it and then we return all the fruits There we go. Let's see if it works. As we can see, this works because we are getting all the, the fruits here. Let's delete. It deletes still with entity framework core. And if we add it, let's add it with random stuff or add fruit 
we successfully retrieve the list using our SQL server, like you can see here. So let's now use the add one. Let's do the add. So let's copy this part. And let's add the food. Let's open a connection. Let's do an SQL command CMD. Again, the same thing. New SQL command. And then how do we insert in a, that SQL table? We just put insert into then the table name that is fruits, then the name, color, because the ID is generated, and then the values that we want to add. In this case, it will be the name and the color. Then we add the parameters. with the value, the parameter starts with that, so that the SQL can distinguish, and then we do the same thing for the color, that will be where do we have the new fruit, we the edit and the add is the new is called the variable new fruit that will get the name and the color from the placeholders is the variable new fruit so we will get new fruit dot name and new fruit dot color and then we execute as non query because this is a command And we close and we format. Let's see if it works. So we now replaced oh, the namespace. What happened here? It might be a copy paste misused. Let's try again. It might be a misclick. Let's save the file. Let's try now. Okay. Was a misclick, sorry for that. And now let's try to delete. I mean, let's try to insert using SQL. So, apple green. Let's add a green one this time. Let's investigate a bit. So, it seems like we are not passing the connection and let's put here this connection asynchronous as well this should work It's adding, I believe, but we are not, exactly, this is adding, but we are not refreshing the list, so let's do it. Let's refresh the list. Fruits. Add new fruit. Oh, 
apple thread. Nice. Yeah, these are not coming. Let's check what's with that. Might be in the get. Of course, that's because we are not reading. Bar id equals reader id dot to string. And then we have to set the ID. Actually, let's set as an it. Because it's an it, as it's declaring the entity. Now, it should be all be okay. And there we go. Apple green zero because we are not getting again. We are not editing the ID. Also Let's fix here a couple things since we saw that we have multiple entries here and we are just getting the last one. So we are updating here when we initialize the list once we open the page the fruits that we had to a new empty list. So let's remove that since we already have that in here. We already are doing it once so we don't need to initialize it we only need to add the fruits when we read from the select to add the fruits we need to refresh the list in order to bring the new list refreshed from the database so we enumerate them it we enumerate it again and let's do the same thing for all of them. So this is entity framework core as well. Let's do it for uninitialized as well. Let's do it in the end here. Okay. This should work. Fresh and there we go. Let's start deleting here. It's still deleting with entity framework core. Let's add with the SQL. And there we go. The ID is still missing when we add. So we are getting the ID. When we get, where are we getting? Reader the ID. And then Indeed, reader the ID because the ID starts with a capital I. So now we just need to, to edit and to delete. So let's do it. We do the same thing, the same commands, but for editing and delete. Let's start with delete. It's a very simple one. Oops. So let's open again connection with the connection string again. We can just put this in a variable and reuse it. And then 
editor we can open and then new SQL command and we do a basic delete query from fruits where the ID equals to ID and we pass the connection then we pass the parameter of course and then for simplicity for simplicity sake I will just leave the fruit here on as a parameter and just use the ID of the fruit and then cmd dot execute non query async and we await and then of course we refresh the list by enumerating it again fruits dot to list and there we go let's try it there we go it's not updating right away but it is because we need to do it async I mean it's because we need to do it not asynchronously but outside of here I believe Apple green delete and it deleted Now let's go to the end. Let's copy paste. And do an SQL command to update the fruits and set. the name equals to name and color equals to color where the ID equals to the ID and let's set with a value a name the new foot name let's pass the ID first then the name and the color and I believe that is it dot to list and let's try apple yellow we are not getting the ids again getting because every time we insert the id is generated and we are not retrieving the id so 
for simplicity let's just remove the id and present only the name of the and the color because otherwise we would have to be refreshing all the time seeing every time we insert the new a new a new fruit so the editing we need to pass the id and not the new fruit id in order to edit correctly we have actually to reboot the id here otherwise it will not fill the id in the new fruit and on the list it will have no id in the fruit and when we want to edit and pass by parameter it will have empty and not edit or delete successfully so let's edit let's try again so id equals to id and let's pass it again and it's not a string it's an int When we add a fruit, instead of two lists, what we want is to call the uninitialized async again. So that it refreshes the list. Let's try. green we did edit and now let's delete but we still need to refresh so actually calling uninitialized that isn't a good practice let's do the following let's on the add let's add the fruits dot add the new fruit let's set the new fruit the edit fruit let's find the updated equals to fruits dot first where the fruits dot id equals to this id and then updated fruits dot name equals to the new fruit dot name and updated fruit dot color equals to new fruit dot color. And to delete, we do the deletion. So in the fruits, we just remove the fruits. On the add, in order to add a new fruit, we need to set the ID, the new ID. And to get the new ID, we need to execute Scalar. That retrieves us, retrieves us the ID. So, our new ID equals to int this new ID. int 32 dot parse and let's put it like 
is actually in top first, but the convert dot int thirty two and like this. Now we have the new ID. And then we can add to the new fruit dot ID equals to the new ID. And there we go. Let's see if anything is missing. I don't think so. Let's try. Let's run again. .net run. Let's refresh. Let's edit the fruits. Oops. So banana, yellow, edited. Let's delete. Let's add. And we got zero again. So I believe this has to do with the scope identity that we have to add on the add SQL. So here we just need to add scope select scope identity and it should solve it to finalize our app. So now let's refresh and there we go. Let's delete and try again. Nice, it worked. Edit, deleted, and there you have it. Our brand new app using Entity Framework 8 and SQL Server Native. So that wraps up our tutorial on how to work with data with SQL Server in .NET 8 and I hope you found this project helpful and that you learned something new along the way. If you followed along, congratulations on completing the project. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing to the channel for more programming tutorials and projects. If you have any questions, suggestions or just want to share your own version of the project, just drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and happy coding. See you in the next video.